Hello everybody, this is Sky Dharmas. Uh, today I want to talk about the perihelion precession of the planets, uh, in particular the perihelion precession of Mercury. Uh, but first off, we uh, should look again at this graph of measured g-values. It shows that uh, gravity depends on the baryon number. And so when you look at the gravity per kilogram, you will get different values depending on uh, how much negative binding energy there is in the element in question because the gravitational binding energy reduces the mass but doesn't reduce the number of particles and therefore you have more gravity per kilogram or more particles per kilogram for certain elements like steel um, yeah, elements with a lot of negative binding energy so now let's get to the perihelion precession of uh, Mercury. So um, this is how you calculate it. Uh, this element here is specific to my gravity theory. So here you have uh, um, the planet I, which is the planet of interest, in this case uh, Mercury. And J is the influencing planet. And of course we add up all the influences of the different planets. Uh, if they are closer to the Sun uh, than Mercury, then um, it would be this equation here. Um, but but that, that's not possible in this case because Mercury is already the closest to the Sun and there are no other planets closer to it. So uh, this second term here disappears. Um, and if you want to know the derivation of this equation, you can find it in uh, Richard F uh, Fitzpatrick's book here, Celestial Mechanics. Um, this here is the approximate uh, equation for this. Uh, the more precise one is also looking at uh, the, um, the eccentricity of the orbits and their inclination. Uh, within the plane um, but we can calculate the difference between Newtonian physics and my composition dependent physics by uh, calculating this one time with my theory and then again with Newton's theory where you don't have these terms and where the masses are different so these are uh, different masses in, in my theory uh, the planets are all a bit heavier because uh, if the gravitational constant of your material is smaller than the gravitational constant of iron and the usual the gravitational constant that is usually normally used is that of iron but we know that earth is not made of iron mercury is not made of iron so in reality you need more mass to have the same gravity and so if the planets are heavier than we think, then they, they show more resistance to uh, forces, and so then you get uh, slightly smaller perihelion precessions. But the effect is not so great because you're always dealing here with uh, uh, geometric means of g values. So here you have the geometric mean between. Um, the, the planet of interest and the influencing planet and here also between the Sun the Sun and the planet of interest so um, the, the the results we get are, are here the predictions these are the predicted values my value uh, 573.975 plus minus 0 0.0017 arc seconds per century. Um, and according to Einstein's theory via Park 2017, we get this value. Now, now this, this value is pretty close to the very early value by Newcomb, which is very, is, is not very precise plus or minus uh, 2.1. So here both me and Einstein agree, uh, both our predictions agree. Um, but 
it's not very significant because uh, it's a uh, very high uncertainty here. Then claimants, which is cited by Wikipedia. Um, here, Einstein actually disagrees. And, and the agreement of value is only 99.79%. And my prediction agrees, uh, agrees with the margins of error and agrees with uh, in, in value uh, to 99.98%. Well, that's a very large percentage. Then you have Duncombe, uh, 1956, and here uh, both disagree. Um, but that's um, that's a very short paper. Uh, I don't know quite to, what to think about it. Um, but um, what did happen with Newcomb is that for the first time you had a agreement with general relativity and the other planets. Um, Venus, Earth, and Mars. But the problem here is that, um, as you can see from this book by um, by Ohanian, um, here, um, as you can see, there are only standard deviations for Mercury. And there's a small disclaimer at the bottom say, saying that um, the values quoted for the observed precession of the planets are not independent since in the data analysis a single parameter is used to characterize all of these precessions. So basically they're not looking, and nowadays they're no longer looking at the precession independently and unbiased, but they assume that any deviation from general relativity would have to be for all the planets in the same way which isn't reasonable because uh, the the different plants are made of different materials and so they're deviating from general relativity to different degrees. Um, and some people analyze um, analyze the data by by framing every deviation from um, general relativity as uh, mont as a a violation of the inverse score law and then when you have a very small um, discrepancy for let's say mercury then you would have to have a huge discrepancy for pluto and uh, neptune and pluto and so on and so thereby they rule out uh, any big deviations and say uh, po po the possible deviations are extremely tiny like uh, mi milli arc seconds and that's just not very honest. I mean, it's it's blatantly ignoring all gravity theories that are composition dependent. And sure, those are very rare theories, like my theory. But um, yeah, there there's uh, there are many problems with uh, Perian precessions. Um, I only calculated the Perian precession of. Uh, Mercury and Saturn, because those are the only two planets for which we actually have independent perihelion precession observations. Um, the data for Saturn comes from a flyby of a of a probe, um, and the agreement there is also better uh, using my theory than using Einstein's theory. Um, Ninety nine point nine nine. Uh, Nine zero percent for Einstein's theory and ninety nine point nine 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 four percent for my theory, if I remember com correctly. Um, but um, yeah, the the reason why uh, the difference is so small there for Saturn is that um, the big planets they are all made of the same stuff. They are all, all gas giants. And the small planets that have very different g-values, they're, they're small and their influence is small. And so that's why there the deviation is not quite as big as for Mercury. Okay, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.